emphasize in our, in our research is that capital flight is a, is a global phenomenon. So for you to think about the effects and the responsibilities and so on, you have to look at both sides, both ends of the, of the, of the transaction, not just the source of, the, of capital flight, which is African countries, but where the money is going. So the responsibility of um, the role of government in the West is multifaceted. Faceted. Let me go, let's go back to the case of, of, of loans. A majority of the loans given to African countries come from governments, either directly or from institutions that they are that are supported by, by, by government, the World Bank and the IMF. So one thing that Western governments could do is, is put, be more diligent in the management of the loans to African countries to ensure that the loans are really well tracked, are well monitored, and that the loans end up uh, uh, financing the purpose, the goals, and the, the, the project that were intended for. So I think when money is being stolen, when money is mis being misused, the Western government has to ask themselves, what is our responsibility? Because that's, that's your money. And the public in the, in the, in the West has the right to to ask their own governments how much oversight they are having on the money that they are sending to African governments. In the end, I'm a taxpayer in the US, so when the US give money as aid, it's my money. So I have the right to know, is the US government monitoring carefully the loans that it's given to African countries, and true for other countries also. But at the same time, the, the Western governments should help in tracking stolen money that's being invested in their own economies, in their own banks. So we have rules on the books about transparency in the banking system, that banks should disclose uh, the identity of, of, of people who deposit large, large sums, of, sums of money who are not from the country. So we need the government to put uh, rules and regulations that, re that really make it, make it, make it sure that banks are transparent and reporting the appropriate information to their own government, but also to governments of, in, the, in, in, in African countries. And this brings me to the, to the case of uh, the role of the international banking sector. It's, it's, one, it's two things, transparency, accountability. Transparency, accountability. They have to be transparent. They have to be accountable for their obligations vis-a-vis -vis the government and vis-a-vis -vis the public. So African governments should be able to get information about bank accounts held by their own citizens abroad, because those are known by the banks. So we, we, we are arguing that governments in Africa should get to, should, should, I mean, Western, Western governments should help African governments to actually get access to the information about the financial flows um, uh, of their own citizens. Multinational corporations, a key concern we raise is their is their uh, uh, their practices vis-a-vis -vis tax. We have concerns about tax evasion by multinational corporations, and this is especially important for African countries where you find that in many many sectors like resources, oil and minerals, the big players are foreign. They are foreign corporations, and we find that they they pay much less than what they should be paying because they, they are able to manipulate their accounts, they are able to manipulate their profits, showing that they have losses when they have profits through what we call transfer pricing. Uh, because you have these, these corporations have, have, they have location, they are located in many, many places, including in what we call secrecy jurisdictions or tax havens where they pay no tax. So they are able to, to, to show that they are incurring expenses which are above the true expenses. So you find that in African countries, their profits are very, very small. And that allows them to pay very, very low taxes. That's a big concern. In the, this is, again, where Western governments can help because these are Western corporations. Uh, multinational institutions like the IMF and the World Bank can help in many, many ways. One, again, uh, in, in uh, ensuring diligence in monitoring of the, of the loans that they, they, they give. I think these institutions have very well uh, crafted procedures about lending uh, the, uh, uh, or to, to, to developing countries. Uh, if those rules are followed, I can, I can bet you that 
there will be transparency about where the money is going. My concern is about is about the private private lenders whether they are doing the same. I think we have to find a way of of, of requiring private lenders also to follow the same procedures that say the IMF and the World Bank follow, which are more transparent, which are more systematic uh, in terms of where the money goes and how how the money is is being used. So especially I'm mentioning this because we see more loans being given by non-traditional donors, including from emerging economies, China uh, and, and, and other countries, but also from private lenders, banks. We need to be sure that those lenders are following very transparent rules that have been agreed upon from the traditional lenders, say the DAC, uh, the Committee on, on, on Development, uh, Development Cooperation. Uh, those rules are very, very helpful because at least it sets the standards for what every lender should be doing. And we want everybody to be, to be following those rules. And having, giving African countries a, 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 a seat at the table when, they, when these rules are being, are being uh, discussed. Yes, uh, it's a very ironic situation where we, when it, I remember back in 2001, when we published our paper with a title that, in, that said that Africa is a net creditor to the rest of the world, everybody was shocked. I said, you're talking about the poor countries, the poorest countries in the world being lenders to the rest of the world? It's not possible. But we showed the numbers. You saw, we, fi we find that the amount of capital flight leaving African countries is by far greater than the amount of loans that are coming into the African continent. You do the math. That means that African countries are lending to the rest of the world. So to your question, it means that actually Western economies are benefiting from capital flight because this money, first of all, goes into their own banking systems. So it's fueling the financial system in African, in, in Western, Western economies, in New York, in Paris, in London, in, 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 all, in all capitals. Uh, so they are the ones benefiting from the resources coming from African countries. It, it defeats the purpose of going out and looking for more aid, for looking for more FDI, if the loans come and end up being shipped abroad. In fact, if, if the West was to effectively help African countries, the first thing to do is help African countries keep their own money. If African countries could keep their own money, they would need less aid, they would need less loans. So my plea to Western governments is to see how to close the loopholes in their financial systems, to hold their, their, their banks accountable to, be, to transparency, to hold their, their multinational corporations accountable to tax, to paying taxes to in, in African countries, we will be in a much, much better shape to finance development in African countries without mortgaging the future of their generations. Because really, when you borrow, you're basically uh, consuming the well-being of the future generations. So if you look at African countries, they have the potential to mobilize domestic resources. They have the potential to create government revenue. The, the point is, how do they keep those resources without being, uh, them being stolen and channeled, or channeled abroad? Uh, I think one of the reasons is what I mentioned before, that uh, what some, part of, some capital flight is financed by, by, by stealing money that's borrowed by the government. So I want to remind our viewers that when the, when the government of Germany, France, the US lends money to African countries, that comes from the government budget. And remember where the budget comes from. The revenue comes from your pocket as taxpayers. So when that money is lent to an African country and being stolen by a bureaucrat, you are being, you are being, your money is being stolen as a taxpayer. It's your money that's being, being stolen. So the citizens should be outraged 
by a phenomenon where their government is lending money and the money is being stolen by politicians. That's the first reason. Every penny that's being stolen is somebody's tax. Okay? The other reason why, uh, why citizens in, in Western countries should be concerned is that I believe that the majority of 99% of the citizens in the West are very concerned about poverty in African countries. They are very concerned about people not being able to eat. They are concerned about kids not being able to, to be able to go to schools because in our own, in, here in the West, we take those things for granted. Every kid goes to school, every kid has food to eat. That's not true in many African countries. I believe, and I live in these countries, I talk to people, everybody would like to see that every kid has a chance to go to school. So citizens in the West should be concerned about capital flight because it prevents government from providing schools, medication to the children. And that should infuriate citizens in Europe, in America, in Asia, and everywhere. So that's uh, another reason is um, a prosperous Africa is a good thing for Western citizens. First of all, then you have less of pressure to actually give aid to African countries. Then you have less, uh, less pressure for people to migrate because they can't eat. You have people who are fleeing of, because of poverty, because of conflicts, which are some of them caused by, 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 by lack of uh, resources. Um, if, we could, if we could help African countries to keep their own resources, to finance their own investments, we have, would have booming economies, which, by the way, would be good markets for, for, uh, for Western governments, for Western uh, producers. So a prosperous Africa is a good thing for, for, Western, for Western economies as well. I do applaud these initiatives because they uh, they can change people's lives. Let me take the case of, of fair trade. Um, if you look at uh, many countries in Africa, they have they rely on exports of primary commodities, including agricultural pro products like coffee, trade, and so on, uh, uh, coffee, tea, cotton, and so on. But when you look at the value chain, you find that uh, the producer of coffee in Ethiopia, in Burundi, in Rwanda, gets a very small fraction of the product of the value of the tea, of the coffee that you and I consume in the morning. You'll find that they get maybe two cents out of one, one dollar of, of, of the coffee. And this is because of the, of the, of the lack of transparency in the pricing of the, of, 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 of the, of the product. The, the farmers are shortchanged because they have no say about the, about the valuation of, of the product. So what fair trade is trying to do is give back the maximum po uh, portion of the value added of the product to the producers. So that helps increase income going directly to the producers. That helps reduce poverty. That helps uh, 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 send kids to school and send... Uh, uh, people to, to the, for medical treatment. So in a sense, that would help improve access to, to uh, the basic needs that, pe that people have, do not have in many, in many parts of the, of, the, of, the, of the countries. The other part where uh, the NGOs, for example, could be helpful is be advocates for transparency and accountability really stigmatize this process, this, this phenomenon of capital flight and, and uh, embezzlement of, of, of government resources. Also help demand more transparency on their own banks, on banks in their own countries. Put more pressure on their own governments to put more pressure on their corporations so that they can be more, more transparent. So in, that, in a sense, the NGOs could be partners with African countries in, in championing more transparency and more accountability in the international financial system, in, in taxation, and that will, will make a big difference in uh, reducing tax evasion and capital flight.
thank you very much. For people who are interested in our work, um, the first place would be to look at our website, which has uh, all the information. I can send you the link, and you can post it maybe on your on your well, to your to your to your viewers. Uh, in terms of supporting our work, uh, most of the work we do is part of our our obligations. We are academics. We, what we do is research. Uh, we also have been been fortunate to have uh, support from uh, foundations that have been very, very generous, uh, including the Open Society Foundation, uh, which has been, uh, which has funded some of our work. The African Economic Research Consortium in Africa has been supportive of our work. Um, so what I would say is that I would encourage people in their own countries to engage in this research. Uh, to encourage their own universities and uh, to teach about these, these these issues, I would encourage NGO to organize workshops about about these 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 issues, um, and encourage their government to fund uh, the the research by their own citizens. Mm 